Hi, and thanks for choosing Pebblehost. In today's video, I'm going to show you how you can make your very own Minecraft Earth server. And I'm not only going to be telling you how to install the map, I'm also going to be recommending plugins and versions that you can use for the server. So hopefully this will get your server fully set up. Anyway, let's get right into it. So first of all, we're going to want to select our server type. So there's a few options that you can go with. If you want plugins, you have to choose a version that does support them. So if we go to the jar and pre-install menu, the main ones you can select for plugins are paper, spigot, and craft bucket. I'd recommend picking paper, as it is the most optimized. If you want to play with no plugins at all, you can simply just go with vanilla, and this will be the absolute base Minecraft. If you want to have mods as well, you can of course go to other, and then we can select Forge 1.17.1 all the way up to Forge 1.19. And of course, there is a ton of older versions as well, and you can actually install these yourself. And we also have a video on that, so I'll leave it in the description. However, if you do have a premium plan, you can come down to other pre-installs, and as you can see, we have all the Forge and Fabric versions here. Also bear in mind that for this video, I'm going to be showing plugins instead of mods. However, as I said, I'm going to select Paper 1.18.2. We'll then click save, and then we can restart our server. Alright, so first of all, we need to download our map. So I'll leave a link in the description to this website. Once we're on here, we're then going to click downloads, and it'll take you to this page. Now before we do anything, we want to set our resolution. So as you can see down here, we have a few different scales. Now what this essentially means, for example, the 1 to 500, means that one Minecraft block is 500 real life meters. So the smaller the second number is, the bigger the map will be. Now of course, 1 to 500 will be absolutely massive, as if we go to the side here, we can actually see the dimensions of the world, which is absolutely huge, and then we also have the file size here, which is of course ridiculous as well. You can also see all the structures and ores and everything that you might need to know over here. So as you can see on the 1 to 500, we have a ton of download links here. And only a few of these have them. So if we go to 1 to 750, it only has 5. If you go to 1 to 1000, it only has 3. Then if you go to 1500, there is only 1. So of course, anything 1500 or above is way easier to install. And I'm going to show both of these. So let's start with 1 to 1000, where we have 3 parts here. This will also be pretty much the exact same method for the 500 and for the 750 as well. So we're simply going to open each one of these in a new tab, and there we go. So we're now on this website, we'll have to wait 5 seconds, and then on the top right corner, we'll be able to click skip. You'll have to do this on each one, and then after you've skipped them all, you'll be taken to this website. And of course, you just want to download each one. So once they're downloaded, they'll look like this. Now for the next step, we're going to be using a tool called 7-Zip, and I'll leave a link to this in the description. But we're going to find the one that says 001 at the end, we're then going to right click on it and then go to 7-zip and then go extract here. And we'll then start extracting all of these files. And then once it is completed, we'll have a folder and also an image of the map. So now we're going to upload it to our server. So from Pebblehost, go to the file manager on the left. And what we're then going to do is we're simply going to drag the folder in. And as you can see, it's actually hit the maximum file limit as our folder contains more than 5,000 files. This is only really a problem for bigger worlds. So we'll click OK, and then with our files, we're going to right click it, go back to 7-zip, and click Add to Archive. And then in this menu, for the archive format, we're going to change this from 7-zip to simply just zip. So once that is there, we're then going to click OK, and it will start zipping the folder. So now we have our zip file created. So what you can do is simply just drag it into the file manager. However, as it is a single file, it might actually be faster to do it through an FTP client. Though of course, this is completely your choice. If you don't want to use an FTP client, then I recommend FileZilla, and you can also find your details on the left of the file manager. Okay, so now our zip has finally uploaded. Next, we want to click the check mark next to it, and then go to archive at the top, and then to extract. And as you can see, the unzip is now in progress. This shouldn't take long. Alright, so the unzip task has now finished, and as you can see, we now have an earth folder. And this is our new world. Once it has extracted, you want to make sure that you do also delete the zip file as the zip file will take up a ton of space. And if it takes up too much, your server could get flagged for taking up too much storage. So it's pretty crucial that you do delete the zip file after you have extracted it. Then I'm going to show you how you can actually set it as your world. So there's two different things you can do here. For the first one, you can switch the world's name to the name of this folder, or you could delete the world folder and then simply rename this folder to world. I'm going to do the second one. So we're going to delete our current world folder, and then we're simply going to click the check mark 
and then click rename. We will then rename this to world. We'll click rename and there we go, we now have the world folder. And this is our earth folder. So now we can simply restart our server. And as you can see, we have now loaded into the server. Now you can tell this is the earth map as we have the stone brick wall over here. And this wall is actually the border between countries. So you can tell that we are actually in the earth map. So now I'm going to show you how to do it for a smaller world, which is much more simple. If you're wanting to download a 1 to 1500 or higher world, then this is what you need to follow. So for all of these, there will be a single link. And for this, I'll be using 1 to 2000. So of course, find the version you want. I'll just pick the top one. And then click one of these download links. It doesn't really matter which one you click. It will then take you to this page where you have to wait for 5 seconds and then you can click skip in the top corner. Once you're on this website, you want to click download on this zip file. Alright, so once it has downloaded, we're simply just going to drag it into our file manager. So then it will start uploading. Now do be prepared for this to take a little bit, but it also depends on your internet speed. So if your internet isn't the best, then it might take a while. Alright, so now our zip file has uploaded. What we're then going to do is we're then going to click the checkbox, we're then going to go up to archive, and then click extract. As you can see in the top, the unzip is currently in progress. This shouldn't take long at all. Alright, and now the unzip task has finished, and we now have our earth world folder. You're also going to want to delete the zip file from your server, and this is because the zip file will take a ton of space, and if it is too big, then your server will get marked as using too much storage. So in order to prevent this, just simply delete the zip file after you've extracted it. Then I'm going to show you how you can actually set it as your world. So we have two options here. What we can do is change the world's name to the name of this folder, or we could change the folder's name to the name of the world, and I'm going to do that instead. But first of all, we need to remove our old world. So we'll grab our world right here, we'll select it, and then click delete, and then delete again. And then at the top here, we're going to click the check mark, and then we're going to click rename. We're then going to rename this to our old world's name, which was just world. We'll then click rename, and then there we go, the world folder is now back, which is of course still our earth folder. So now we've done that, we can click back, and then we're just going to restart our server. All right, so I'm now joining the world. And as you can see, it has spawned us here. Now this of course is not a vanilla biome, and you can also tell this from the stone brick wall we see just over there. And this stone brick wall is actually the border between countries. So now we definitely know that our earth map has fully installed. Alright, so now I'm going to show you a few plugins that you might want to use. This isn't going to be every plugin you're going to want to use, it's just a few suggestions. So first of all, we have Essentials X. Now this is arguably one of the biggest Minecraft plugins ever, and it gives a ton of commands and utilities. Not only that, but it also works all the way down to 1.8.8. So no matter which version your world is on, Essentials will pretty much support it. Alright, so on to the next plugin. So the next plugin we have here is called Core Protect, which will basically log every single thing that everybody does. This means interactions, breaking and placing blocks, as well as taking things and putting things in chests, and pretty much anything you can imagine, even things like opening gates and doors. Not only does it log it, but you can also roll back, meaning that if someone does blow up something, you can simply select that area of land, and then you roll it back to how it was before. So if you are kind of concerned about having griefers on your server, then I'd definitely recommend Core Protect. The next plugin we're going to go on to is called World Guard. This lets you make areas of land called regions that, for example, you can change gameplay features in it. So some of these, for example, are making leaves not be able to decay, as well as vines can't grow, corals can't grow, also things like mob spawning as well. To use World Guard, you are going to need another plugin called World Edit, which is once again one of the most popular plugins ever. And World Edit has so many features, it's ridiculous. The next plugin is pretty much essential for an Earth server, and it's called DyneMap. Now, DyneMap essentially renders your world. It can do this in 2D and in 3D with high quality, and you basically gain access to a completely live map where you can see players as well as things being built at the same time, and it is completely live. So this is pretty much an essential, as it also lets you see what countries people are in if you are doing an Earth server. This last plugin is called Image Maps, and this one isn't really an essential. It's more of just one if you want to have some fun with some plugins. And it basically lets you put any image you want in your server. So literally any image from the internet you can put into your Minecraft server for everyone to see. And we also have guides on every single one of these plugins except for image maps. Alright, so as you can see I've started my DyneMap render. It's only been running for a few minutes and it's already on quite a lot of the map. So currently this country I'm in is Yemen. 
Then over here we have things like Ethiopia and Somalia down here. And you can see there's tons of walls all over the map, which will show borders between countries. So as I said, Dynemap is pretty much essential if you are doing an Earth server, as then you can see exactly what countries people are in. If you are wanting to look at it in more detail, you can also go to the right to the arrow, and then select the green cube, and it will turn it into a 3D view. But bear in mind, the 3D view will take a lot longer to render. So as you can see, it's only rendered this much so far. Alright, so now I'm going to show you how you can actually set a world border on your server. A world border is pretty important, but the people can't just fall out of the world and die in the void. So for this, we're going to be using the world border plugin. And I'll leave a link to this in the description. So first of all, we need to find our dimensions. To do this, we can go back to the website that we got our map from. Then we're going to find the map that we installed, so mine is a 1 to 2000. Once we've selected our scale, you then want to come over here to block size. And then right here, we're actually going to divide this by 2. So I've now got on a calculator and also a notepad out. So first of all, we're going to do 18,432, and then divide that by 2, and we get 9,216. And then for the second dimension, which is 9,216 as well, we're then going to divide that by 2, and we get 4,608. So these are the two dimensions that we need. We now want to teleport to the middle of the world. To do this, you can do slash TP, 0, and then 0, and just another 0, and it'll teleport you to the middle of the world. What we're then going to do is we're going to do slash WB, and then we're going to find our numbers from earlier. Once we have our numbers, we're then going to type in set. Then we're going to put in the first number, so 9216, and then the space, and then 4608. We'll then press enter. And as you can see, the world border has been set. So now if you look at the dyne map, as you can see, it's actually added this red line around. And this right here is actually the world border. So now we're going to find a space up here just to teleport to it. All right, so I've now teleported to these coordinates. And as you can see, we have the end of the world right here. But now if we try walking off the end of the world, as you can see, it says you have reached the end of this world and it actually teleported me back onto the land. Once again, just jump off. And as you see, it literally just teleports you back every time you try to jump off. There's also a bunch of different commands you can do. If you simply just do slash WB, there is actually five pages of commands that you can do. So you can have a look through them, customize the world order how you want. Anyway, hopefully this video has helped you. If it has, definitely leave a like and subscribe, and hopefully, I'll see you next time.